My name is Hannah, and this is my year of less stuff. Hey y'all, welcome to my first check-in of 2020. This is the first check-in of the year of less stuff. It's technically the January check-in. I know we're a couple of days into February now, but I needed some time to get stuff organized. There's gonna be a lot of information in this video. I've broken it down into two things that I need to discuss, kind of two parts. The first thing that I need to check in about is my budget, being on a more fluid budget this month and how that affected my relationship with shopping. And then the second thing that I need to check in with you about is the year of less stuff itself, how it went this month trying to reduce my stuff number and how being under the umbrella of this new project has made me feel and whether it has affected my behavior, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to do first one, and then the other, the synopsis of the video, or the abstract, if you will, of the video, is as follows. Sticking to my budget under these new fluid rules was really, really hard for me this month. And I had a bad month in many ways in terms of my relationship with shopping. It was probably a worse month for me than any month since before my no-buy year. It was bad for me in terms of my internal state, but when the dust settled, I was able to see everything because I'm keeping track of everything really clearly. And I was able to see that the damage actually wasn't that bad. It just felt bad because the way that I felt about shopping was really, really concerning to me and the way that I was behaving with relation to those feelings. But the reality of the damage done was really way, way less bad than it would have been if I'd gone through the same kind of month before my no-buy year. And that's good. So it didn't feel awesome, it wasn't awesome, but I like that I'm able to see my progress through the lens of having a really bad month. So that's the gist of part one of the video. As soon as we get into the meat, I'm going to talk about this, and I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings about what happened. I'm going to go over all of those with you. So on the one hand, it has been a tough month. But on the other hand, the year of less stuff has been amazing so far. And in my opinion, it's been wildly successful. So in the second half of the video, I'm going to go into that. I'm gonna talk about why it feels that way to me and just explicitly report back about how the project is unfolding in my life. Based on some recent comments, I, I'm afraid, I fear that I have failed to accurately communicate the true thrust of the project and the way that it's actually acting on me and the way that it's actually manifesting in my life. So as part of the second part of this video, I'm going to try again to explain it and maybe explain it better than I did in my intro video. I've tried to be clear about the fact that this year, this part of my project, third year, is all about loosening my intense grip on perfectionism and kind of allowing myself to breathe a little bit month by month all the while making sure that my long-term progress, my yearly progress, is towards financial health and also towards a more curated set of less disposable belongings. I'm doing this in an attempt to build stronger muscles of natural moderation, which, as I've learned this month, are weak in me, even though my rule-following muscles, especially like my financial rule-following muscles, are very strong as a result of my budget and my no-buy year. I think I might need to unpack that a little bit more on camera in the second part of this video because I've seen a lot of comments this month basically like policing my behavior with intense perfectionist standards. Even though my project this year is built without intense perfectionist standards. In fact, they're like patently missing. Like perfectionism and perfectionist standards are patently absent from my project. I built it without them on purpose. I am, again, so sorry if I failed to adequately communicate the shape of my project and why I'm choosing to do it in my introduction video or in any of my videos this month. I'm going to try to clarify at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, part one, it's happening. I'm gonna tell you about how it went down with me and budgeting this month, which was the first month since before my no-buy year, two years ago, that I've had relative freedom, 
I mean, I have a yearly budget, so I have a rough idea of what would be like way too much to spend in one month on myself or on beautiful things. But there is that fluidity. I haven't given myself super strict rules that in order to retain my pride, I need to stay within. So I was kind of free. I had like set myself free on the world of beautiful things in a way that I haven't been since before all of the dramatic changes of my no buy. And the first thing that happened was not, not me shopping. It actually took kind of a while for it to take for me to realize that I like have that kind of freedom. But I was doing a lot of browsing. And pretty early on in the month, the thing that was the most notable to me about this project so far and this year so far was that I became highly aware of how inclined I still am to turn to browsing and other shopping behaviors as a way of not dealing with myself at any given moment. Or another way of saying that, perhaps like a better way of saying that, is that I'm still really inclined to use shopping to make noise in my mind as a way of resisting, fostering, emotional space, spiritual depth, inner peace, all of the things that I'm always wishing that I had more time to foster. I go through periods of my life when I'm genuinely too busy. Like I know that it's too busy. So I'll wake up at 6 a.m. to get like a head start on the day. And instead of listening to a guided meditation for 20 minutes, I'll get right to like editing a YouTube video for 30 minutes so that I can get it uploaded and get all of the metadata done before the end of the day so that I don't have to work on it at lunch at work or I don't have to work on it after work because I want to be like working on another video or filming another video or working on some writing. So during those times when I'm piling on and piling on stuff and like schedule blocking my day or like calendar blocking my day full of work, I often feel like I've lost the thread of my internal health or the way that I think of it is spiritual health. That's a phrase that makes sense to me, but I know that that doesn't really makes sense to everyone. One way that I often think of it, and maybe this will make sense to people, is that I think about it like there's a little Hannah, like a little smaller other Hannah inside big like outer Hannah, <laughs> and little inside Hannah needs like, she needs like consistent care like a house plant. So just like a house plant needs sun and water, little inside Hannah needs uh, like a consistent amount of calm and quiet and space in order to thrive. There are other things that help her out too besides calm and quiet and space. So little inside Hannah really likes it when I exercise, like gets the blood flowing, blood flows into her, like vitamins flow to her and she really likes that. Little inside Hannah likes it when I like have a good long conversation with a friend and I listen a lot to the friend and I'm also listened to by the friend. When I read from a book, pretty much any book, that makes her stronger. Experiences of physical intimacy, positive experiences of physical intimacy make her stronger. So if I take time out of my day to snuggle with Joe, or you know, if I take time out of my day to snuggle <laughs> with Joe. When I was able to dance tango regularly, that was amazing for little herbaceous, <laughs> little herbaceous inside Hannah because tango basically like encapsulates everything that I was just describing, everything that I just listed all in one act. It's meditative, it's introspective, it involves physical intimacy, it involves listening and being listened to. It gets the blood moving. It's like a total all-in-one for the health of the spirit or the self inside or the, the little houseplant inside. So side note to this video, actually, if you feel like your little inside plant is drooping and you happen to live in a place where it's possible to study Argentine tango, improvisational Argentine tango, not ballroom, I highly recommend it. And if actually, if you are really truly interested and you think that I might be able to help you find like a teacher or find a place, hit me up in the DMs or send me an email or something. In any case, sorry I got sidetracked talking about tango, my current lifestyle doesn't really support consistent dancing of tango anymore. I haven't been dancing very much, especially over the past year. So I'm left to support the health of little, little Hannah plant inside me with all of my own resources. But like many of us, and now we're kind of getting into what I've been thinking about, especially what I was thinking about at the beginning of this month, like many of us, I have the instinct to self-sabotage. 
So when I get really busy, I stop meditating, I stop exercising, I rebuff Joe's advances because I'm so tired, and I'm also feeling like uh, I don't want anyone I don't want to let anyone in. I cancel plans with friends. And then the little baby plant starts drooping and losing leaves. And then another thing happens. This is the thing that we're talking about here, which is that I stubbornly stop thinking about the little plant. I start ignoring the voice in my head that's like, you need to water that plant because thinking about her makes me feel bad because I know that this is all going on and I want that knowledge to be subconscious. So I will like actively repress it and be like, no, 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 that's not a thing. So I'm not just failing to give her enough water and sunlight. I'm also pretending that she doesn't exist. I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. I don't need to do those things. I'm too busy. It's too much. I'm totally fine. Everything's fine. And this, this everyone is where shopping comes in. Or this is where shopping would come in for me so many times before my no buy year. And this is where shopping came in for me at the beginning of this month. Because when I have been willfully ignoring the sad, thirsty little plant, when I've been go, go, going, and I've become accustomed to ignoring my responsibility to that little plant, potential moments of space, little gaps, they feel kind of scary because if everything were to stop and my mental chatter were to quiet down, I would have to face that responsibility. I would have to acknowledge it. It's hard to face that I have another job to do that I haven't been doing on top of all of the like work work and regular work that has been keeping me so busy. It's hard to shift <laughs> from being irresponsible in this way to being responsible. So when I start getting a little breathing room in my life, which I did at the beginning of this month because I decided to slow down a little bit with YouTube, add a little bit of a break on an intense project that I'm working on, I started to feel like things were, like my life wasn't, wasn't a total madhouse. At the beginning of January, there are a few times when I woke up, got out of bed, and I realized that I didn't actually have to start working right away. Like I didn't have to cram something in before breakfast basically. And that was like, that hadn't happened in a long time. That was new. And it was so weird to notice that my first reaction to realizing that I had time was basically rejection and panic. I was like, no, no, no. In theory, I have time to meditate or go to the gym or sit just with a cup of coffee and think about things or read a book, but that all sounds bad. This is like my subconscious, <laughs> my subconscious talking. That all sounds bad. That all sounds scary because I'm afraid of what might surface. What could I do instead? Maybe I could like read online reviews of makeup at Sephora. Maybe I could check and see if anything's still on sale at Aritzia after the holiday season. Luckily, this is not my first rodeo and I've spent two years now paying really, really close attention to my shopping behavior and kind of asking myself like, why am I doing this right now? So I was able to notice myself wanting to use shopping to keep myself in a state of frenzy and distraction and to keep my little spirit plant weak because transitioning to a life that's structured to support my spiritual health when I have let it flag for so long is hard. So towards the beginning of the month, I was able to catch myself in the act and basically strong arm myself into starting to water the plant again instead of giving into the temptation to just like go online and browse. So I did start working out more consistently again. That has been amazing. And again, like for the first part of the month when this was just starting to happen and I was noticing it happening, I think it was also just more tempting. Online shopping was more tempting because I had this renewed budget and, and this relaxed like set of relaxed rules, but I did fight back at the beginning of the month and I put some measures for health in place and I felt like I was doing well. But then as the month went on, and this is kind of a tough part of the video because I have to just be like, stuff happened, but I'm not gonna, I, like it's stuff that I just cannot go into right now. Um, but just the month got really chaotic and challenging. So I'm facing some really tough career challenges right now that are like obsessing me and bleeding over into my personal life and I had a really big fight with Joe at one point and then like another smaller fight with Joe and it was just like the, the middle um, like the middle two weeks of the month 
it just got very dark. It just, ha and it just happens. I feel like, I feel like I say this a lot, like every couple of months I come on here and I'm like, I'm having a bad time. And, and I think, I hope that that's just normal. And I think maybe it's just, it feels weird to me, but it may be just be, it may just be the normal fallout of like reporting back about your month every month because everyone has hard times. And sometimes it was like a shipwreck the middle of the month, um, mostly Emo mostly emotionally, mostly for me emotionally because of the long and troubling process of this like big project that I'm working on, which again, someday it will be easy to talk about because I'll be like, here's the thing and this happened. But right now it's like in the middle of it and it just has to be something that's going on behind the scenes. And that's turning me into a wreck. It's like making a mess out of me. And it's been going on for a long time. It's something I've been working on for a really long time. And most of the time I handle it plenty well. And this month I could not handle it at all. It was a lot of last year too. Last year was really hard. I've been on the struggle bus with some of this stuff for a really long time. It's like um, big projects, life questions, like stuff I'm trying to sort out. I'm just internally at, and, and also artistically in like a, in a chaotic place that's long. <laughs> like I'm in the middle of a very long, chaotic moment. And the thing is, it's stuff that I'm not really prepared to talk about online, and I don't think it would be fruitful for me to talk about it online. Um, but I just feel like I have been not quite myself for like six months now. I think that the thing that probably showed it the most last year was that I was like my failure to complete the ethical consumerism project as I had planned it. When I announced that project at the beginning of last year, I thought I was going to have so much more time and energy to commit to that than I ended up having. And then the year picked up, the chaos picked up, all this stuff started happening and I ended up not having as much time or energy or like emotional energy or mental space or anything to commit to it. And I had to re to like readjust my expectations and then not do a thing I, I said that I was going to do, which I hate. Some of what made last year very hard is extending into this year. And I hope that it will be over soon. I really don't expect 2020 to be as hard as 2019 was for me behind the scenes, but January was kind of the worst of it. So when things got dark in the middle of the month, even though I had been thinking about, literally thinking about and taking notes about my tendency to default to shopping instead of taking care of the little Hannah plant, I had been taking notes about it for this check-in. So I, I knew that it was happening, but even though it was so present in the front of my mind, even though I was so aware of it, I still found myself preferring it over dealing with myself, thinking about the bad stuff, facing the darkness and just dealing with it. I, I still felt so much like I needed to escape and shopping has always been my choice form of escapism that I just did it. I went with it. I went back to it. It was kind of the perfect storm because this was my first month with more fluidity with my budget. So I wasn't just browsing. Like during my no buy year, sometimes if I had a hard time, or even during the budget year, I would browse, I would fantasy shop, I would think about things, and then I would end up just not buying the thing or not, not checking out. But because I had my budget available and I had this fluidity, I wasn't just browsing, I was actually shopping. And in some cases, I ended up actually buying the stuff. I will save all of the details. <laughs> I'm going to save all the details about what I actually bought for my next video, which will be the video about how I spent my budget in January. But the long and short of it is that I spent, I basically spent the part of my budget that was slated for January, if it was broken down month by month. And I also spent the part of my budget that was theoretically slated for February. So I spent like the amount of two months budget all in one month. And I also replaced some things and certain kinds of replacement items are, are no longer things that I have to budget for. And I also bought some homewares, which I really didn't think was gonna be a problem. That's why I didn't include it in my budget this month, but I kind of felt my old obsession with like the perfection of my home and the perfection of my space returning. It was very troubling. As I've talked about several times before, a lot of times the shopping compulsion for me is related to like an obsession with self-improvement. It's like a worrying of the ego. And so I, that was what was rising up in response to my unhappiness and sort of a sense of powerlessness and hopelessness. It was like this 
this um, focus on self-improvement was rising up to match that because I was so unhappy mid-month and that was causing me to want to like have nicer things in my home and have nicer things on my body. That's that's the shape of things. That's how it has been since before by no by no by year. That's the problem that I'm in recovery from. I saw it playing out so clearly pretty much across the board this month. My house was being haunted by the ghosts of my old behaviors. And I mean that like on every level, not just my literal house, but like the house of my mind. <laughs> the haunted house of my mind, haunted by the active ghosts of my old behaviors. <laughs> so as I film this, we're moving into like the good part of the first part of the video, which I'm realizing now is going to be very long. It just has to be that way this month. There's so much information that I need to put into this video. but. It's over now. As I sit here now, that is all not happening anymore. I, I was doing it for a while and then I got myself out of it. I snapped to it and I exhumed the ghosties. And now I feel much more in control. I feel back in control. I feel like my regular self again. But for, for a lot of the month, I felt really bad about it. And I, I actually would say I felt kind of a sense of panic about it, which is awful. I didn't like feeling my old lizard brain, my old shopping lizard brain returning. It was scary, it made me feel shame, and of course I'm terrified about reporting back to you about it here on my channel, especially because so many people have been unkind in the comments this month. I know that I am here like using metaphors of like <laughs> little spirit plants who need water and sunlight, but actually little spirit plant Hannah is like hiding under the covers shaking because this telling you what happened is awful. But this is what happened. This is the reality. And I'm committed to transparency on my channel. So here we go. <laughs> We're doing it. I feel like I was out of control for a little while in January. Maybe for the first time in like my time on YouTube, out of control with shopping. I felt that way a couple of times during my budget year. I felt emotionally out of control with shopping, but I didn't break my budget. So it was like I got out of control, but those feelings like butted up against the very hard boundary of my budget. I remember having times during my budget year when I was like, I want to make this purchase so bad because I was having a bad time. I want to make this purchase so badly. I really wish my budget didn't exist. If my budget weren't in place or if it were more flexible, I would be buying all this stuff. Like I remember having times when I felt that way. So it's not as if I haven't been in this place emotionally at all over these past two years. It's just that because I played by my own rules and because my own rules were very strict, they didn't lead to action. But this month I went back to that place emotionally and because I had a more fluid budget, in some cases, those feelings did lead to action. They caused me to, to shop and actually make purchases. So basically, the transition from the no buy to the budget was seamless. The budget was very clear and the rules were strict enough to keep me on the straight and narrow no matter what happened. But the transition from the budget to this more fluid way of managing my finances and my relationship with beautiful things this was much more rocky because the fluid budget requires natural moderation. And I'm trying to build that in myself, but it's not here yet <laughs> because I just started. The old, it was like the old impulses, those ghosties saw a window, window of opportunity. I was like double weak because it was my first month trying natural moderation and I was having a garbage time for part of the month. I was like really in a dark place. So I was like weakened in every direction and they just like swooped in and, and took over. Curiously, as you'll see when I film my video about what I bought, about how I spent my budget, I don't regret anything that I bought. This is actually so interesting to me. To me, it's one of the most interesting parts of what's been going on. I don't regret anything I bought. There's nothing that I want to return. So it's not as though I like blacked out and freaked out and spent a thousand dollars at Sephora and now I just regret buying all of it and I regret spending it. If that were the case, I would just return it. But I think that my focus on fewer nicer things actually helped me make good decisions about the things I was buying, even though I was buying them to soothe, to self-soothe. Like that, that's the part that's the problem. I was like buying, I was shopping to self-soothe 
during a really dark time. I think when it came to the actual decision making though, even in that altered state, I made good decisions. I, I really liked the things I bought. Again, I'll report back about that in the upcoming video. But I didn't need to buy as many things as I bought this month. And I didn't need to spend, I spent twice as much money as I was like vaguely hoping to spend this month. And at times, and this is the thing that I'm the most ashamed to <laughs> like say on camera, like how did I get myself into this position where when I, when things like this happen to me, when I do things like this, I'm then like, duty bound to like record myself saying that I did it and put it on the internet. There were times when I felt like I saw myself doing it. I, I saw, I was, I was like floating above myself, looking down myself and I was like, Hannah, you are rushing through buying this thing, even though it's expensive. And I know that you want it, but you're doing this in the way, in the old way. Like this is the old out of control behavior. This is the old obsessive behavior. And I saw myself doing it, but I didn't have the willpower to stop myself. Like I, I didn't want to stop. And that was scary for me as someone who has made so much progress with the no buy year, that was scary and it was sad. Okay, let's move on to the silver lining, the upside, the saving grace, because there is one, there are a couple, it's not all bad. Here's the thing, even though I did all of what I'm telling you that I did, I went through it, it was horrible, I'm not glad it happened, I hope it doesn't happen again this year or ever in the future. Even though that is all true, because of the structure of my project and because I'm used to budgeting and I'm used to keeping track of what I spend and I'm used to adding it up and I'm used to checking my bank balance and I have all of these good habits that I've developed with my no by year and with my budget, because of that, I'm able to very clearly see the damage. Like I'm able to actually see the numbers and realistically understand and contextualize the actual fallout, like the actual implications of my behavior this month with shopping. Whereas before my no buy year, I was just like spending, 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 freaking out, freaking out, putting payments on my credit card. Never really, I, I never really could see the shape of things. I wouldn't allow myself to back up and just look at the shape of things because if I did that, I would have had to admit that I had a problem that I needed to stop buying makeup and clothes. But I don't have a problem with that anymore. I can back, even though it was bad, I can back up and I can look at it and I can be like, okay, what did I do? What happened? What do I need to do now? So when I back up from it and I sit down and I look at the dollar amounts, which I will share with you again in that video, I can see two things. One, it's not really that bad. Like I, did, I didn't spend more of my budget. There, there were months last year when I was month by month budgeting with rollover. There were months when I spent more in a month than I spent this month. So it wasn't like $800 or something like it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, especially compared to my behavior before my no buy year. So what felt like insane out of control spending to me now was really like financially, monetarily, and even numbers wise in terms of the number of things I bought, not that bad. It was like a paltry problem compared to what I used to do and how I used to behave. And that's good. That means that my sensitivity to my own behavior has been dramatically recalibrated. So I'm much more sensitive to tiptoeing anywhere close to the line of out of control overspending than I ever was before. And then the other thing that I can see when I back up and look at it is that it's over now. Like I'm no longer in that two week period where I was just like, I don't know, just like sinking into shopping as a way of avoiding how bad I felt. I'm not doing that anymore now. I've stopped it. I like brought myself up short using the muscles that I've developed over the past two years. I felt when I finally like got it together to do it, I felt myself being like, like bringing myself to a halt. And those muscles were very familiar. Like that comes from my no buy and my budgeting year. And I've decided to gently put myself on a pretty much a no buy for the month of February, not because I feel like I want to punish myself or I'm ashamed, but because of how much I spent in January. 
I'm like, well, if I spent my January and my February budget, I don't want to go ahead and spend my March budget in February. I'd rather just say that this was a two month period during which I did most of the spending at the beginning, because I would like to kind of maintain a sense of balance about that. So with the exception of one thing that I'm that I, I genuinely do want that I'm trying to buy. And again, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Um, there is one thing that I might, if I can get my hands on it, that I might buy, um, but I might not be able to get my hands on it, which would be fine because it's just stuff. But that's why I'm saying it's not like a super strict rule base. And I, I'm intentionally not being like, I'm going on a no buy until the end of February. No, instead of that, what I'm saying is I'm gonna really try not to spend that much more of my yearly budget until March, because then I'll be, kind of caught up, I can kind of recalibrate and I can try again at spending only roughly my March budget during March. So it was dark, but it was a flash in the pan and I can already feel myself getting back on my feet. I can already feel the old mindset, the budget mindset, the no buy mindset kind of flooding back in, releasing me. I feel a little bit more prepared to take responsibility for the little plant inside of myself. I, I just feel a little bit more like myself than I did. And um, that, that makes me hopeful because I realize that even if I have a bad time and revert to some of my bad behaviors, or I actually prefer to think of it as like the ghosts of the bad behaviors coming back, even if they really strongly revisit me from time to time, I don't feel afraid anymore that I'm just gonna fall completely off the wagon and ever, ever behave again the way that I behaved before my no by year. I don't think that I will ever go back to behaving that way at all. This month I felt like I was, but when I step back from it and I look at what actually happened, I realized that I, I wasn't, like not in terms of how much I was spending, not in terms of how much I was buying, and not in terms of the of like ignoring it. Cause that's what I did before my no buy year. I like ignored it. I didn't tend to myself. I just let it keep going and going. And none of those three problematic aspects of what I used to do were present this time around. So that's it. That's what happened. That's what happened in January. I think that maybe even more of this, I'll talk about more of this um, in my next video when I talk about what I bought in January, because I always end up talking about how it was to buy the thing and what my mindset was, and whether I'm glad I brought the thing. I always end up touching on all of that stuff in the video about what I spent. So this was a little preview of that. I just wanted to make sure that this went up first. So now you guys will kind of know like the arc of the month when you watch that video and find out what I actually bought. Although a lot of what I bought were those blushes and I already hauled them and I already reviewed them. So a lot of you already know about them. Okay, part two. I just had to change my camera battery and we're only halfway through the materials of the video. So I really hope it's not going on too, too long. It is hard for me to do like a direct about face and switch gears. I, I just, I feel like kind of wrecked by the first part of the video and now I'm looking at my notes for the second part and I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about this, but I'm doing it, we're doing it. I'm gonna talk about the year of less stuff, which is actually a lot more exciting and I'm really glad that I am doing it and I'm really glad that I'm getting this chance to tell you about it. So the goal of my project, which you already know if you watched my introduction video, the goal of my project is to end up at the end of the year with less stuff than I started with. And here is how I anticipate that playing out in my life. I expect that I will declutter a lot of old stuff that I'm not really using. I expect that I will use up as many of my perishable products as possible. And I expect that I will acquire a few nice things to improve my quality of life, all while making sure that the number of things that I declutter and the number of things that I use up far, far outweighs the number of things that I acquire so that my overall number of belongings goes down. So far, that is exactly what I'm doing. I've bought some things that I really wanted and I've decluttered and used up like at least 10 times the number of things that I bought. So one month into the year of less stuff, I have way less stuff and I like the stuff I do have way better. I absolutely love, I am absolutely loving this project. I feel like the framing of the project is making it much more natural for me to weed the crap out of my life. And that's allowing me to have clarity 
about the things that I will actually make use of and actually keep loving over the long term. It's also made me really choosy about the things that I do acquire because I'm highly aware that I'm trying to shrink the overall number of my pretty things. So I'm disinclined to keep anything or buy anything unless I feel very confident that it's something that I will continue to love over the long term. I'm disinclined to buy anything unless I truly believe that I will like use it up or wear it out. And that's exciting. So just from my own perspective inside the project, the experience has been unequivocally amazing. But I am worried that I have failed to adequately explain it to you or adequately communicate to you the effect that it's having on my mindset and on my life because I've seen a lot of commenters concerned that it's fostering a cycle of buying and decluttering. And from my perspective, like the way I see it and what I've experienced, that's like the opposite. Like it could not, that could not be more opposite from what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to explain it. <laughs> I'm going to try to explain it better using this month as an example. So this month I have ushered hundreds of things out of my life and I've bought a few things. So my overall stuff number has gone way down. I only have a finite number of things on the chopping block. Like I started the year with a finite number of things. So that process is not a cycle, it's linear. It's a straight line towards fewer nicer things at the end of the year. It will become a cycle if later in this year, I start decluttering some of the newer things, like some things that I only recently acquired. If I start decluttering those things in order to make space for newer, newer things, obsessively decluttering things I only recently bought in order to keep my collection small, that will become a cycle. But I haven't done that. I've only been decluttering things that I've owned for a really long time, like things that I bought myself before my no buy year and that I've been hanging on to for the wrong reasons. A lot of that is what I've decluttered. I've also been decluttering things that came in PR that I decided last year that I wanted to keep but that under the umbrella of this new project, I'm realizing that I don't really love enough to keep because I want fewer things and I want the things that I do have to be things that I truly love, like things that I love enough to use up. And by those standards, mostly that has to be stuff I bought myself. I, I usually don't love a thing like that if it was a gift from a brand. So a lot of stuff, PR that felt good enough to keep last year, this year, my standards are higher and it just doesn't feel good enough to keep. Actually, the blushes that I bought this month are a perfect example. So with the exception of one of those blush sticks that I bought from ColourPop, Roosevelt, I did buy that myself with my budget last year. But with the exception of that, I haven't bought any blush since before my no buy year. That means all of my blushes, except for ColourPop, were either gifts, things that I didn't choose myself, or they're over two years old. My blush collection had become kind of motley and uncurated and it didn't really suit me. It hadn't suited me for a long time. And I especially felt like where my heart really lies, which is in cream blushes, that was something that I had barely any of and I didn't really have any favorites of. So I just didn't have the blush collection that I felt like I would be excited about using. So this month I bought blushes that I love and that I hope to use up completely. And even though I feel like I bought more this month than I needed to buy in terms of just my budget and my life with spending, even though that's true, because it's the year of less stuff, while I was buying those blushes, I was very, very focused on making sure that they were things that I would really, really love. And I decluttered blushes that I would probably have never used again blushes I was keeping for the wrong reasons, like that gorgeous Givenchy blush. I would probably have never touched it again, but it was really hard for me to let it go before this year because I had all this attachment to it. But getting the blushes that I truly wanted and also holding myself to the standard of ending up with less, less stuff at the end of the year allowed me to finally part with it and to donate it, and that was the right decision. So now I have fewer nicer blushes, and the blushes that I do have I'm hoping to use up. And I'm glad that I decluttered those other blushes because with a smaller blush, blush collection, 
I have a better chance of actually making use of all of the ones that I have. And I want to point out that I did this only with cream blushes. I'm just, I'm like over explaining it because I want to be really, really clear. I want to be as explicit as possible about the reality of how the year of less stuff is manifesting. I did this only with cream blushes. And if you saw my favorites video, you'll remember that that's one of the only categories in which I didn't have a favorite last year. I was like, I loved using the cream blushes that I have because I love cream blush, but I didn't like any of them enough to call it a favorite. I was aware that I didn't have any that I really loved. So I got some, I spent my budget and I got some, but I didn't do that. I didn't haul any other category of makeup. I didn't do that with eyeshadow. I didn't do that with lipstick. There were some that I really wanted to buy. I swatched the Natasha Denona mini gold palette in Sephora and I wanted it so badly. It's so much prettier in person than I thought it would be. I really wanted it, but I didn't buy it. There were also lipsticks there. There were base products that I wanted to buy this month, but I didn't buy any of them because I was aware that I had some already that were my favorites. I had some that I loved enough. I have some that I love enough that I have a good shot at making really good use out of them and maybe even using them up. That wasn't true of my blushes before because I hadn't bought blush in years, but it is true now. If I get tired of my new blushes, <laughs> if I tire of my new blushes, the ones that I hauled this month, and then I get rid of them and replace them with the next newest, shiniest blush. And then I get tired of that blush and I replace it and I just keep decluttering so that I keep a small collection, but there's like blushes in, blushes out. If I start doing that, that will be a cycle. As I said in my intro video, even if that were to happen, like even if it does happen, like say that one of the five blushes that I hauled this month turns out to be not great for some reason or I never reach for it and I think that someone else might get much better use out of it. If that were to happen and I were to declutter that blush partway through the year, like say that that happens one or two times this year. I am trying really hard to be kind with myself during this phase of my evolution instead of like obsessively policing and punishing myself for that kind of thing. I'm trying to allow myself to seek elucidation and improvement over time. And I feel like in this process, puritanism and perfectionism and black and white thinking are the enemies of the good. I want fewer nicer things. And I have structured this project to constantly remind myself of that. And I'm acting accordingly. Even with my more fluid budget, even with all the stuff I went through, I am acting accordingly. I've come through the crucible of the no buy year. I grew a lot, I've changed a lot, but I'm not fixed, I'm not finished growing. And I need to find a way to sustainably support my continued growth over time. And this is it. The strict monthly budget was a great way for me to transition out of my no buy year. I have become a really good strict rule follower with my finances. But this year, I want more. I want those muscles of moderation. I want to be even stronger. So I'm giving myself more freedom and I'm trusting that I will be strong enough or that I will eventually be strong enough, that I will get strong enough not to fly too close to the sun. So far, I would say the fluidity of the budget, the lack of strict rules, it's like the scariest and the hardest part of any of the three projects. And I totally get that for a lot of you out there watching and even some YouTubers who are doing projects like this or who might even be watching, you're still in the crucible of using strict rules to change your fundamental levels of control and awareness. I know that a lot of you are on strict no buys or strict low buys, and it might be weird or even confusing to watch me out here <laughs> navigating this unsteady path towards natural moderation two years after my own no buy has already ended. And all I can say about that is like, I empathize, like I understand why it might be hard or confusing, but I'm not a self-help guru. I'm not a no-buy guru. I feel like I could have been, 
And I probably would have been way more successful if I had done that. Like I could have changed my channel into a no buy channel. And even after my own no buy ended, I could have just continued making how to videos about how to make a no buy successful. I could have kind of swept my own reentry into the world of shopping under the rug and just talked about the way that my life changed because of my no buy. I could have elided over all of my contradictory feelings and just put a premium on how different my life is now that I've done a no buy year. I could have basically just minimized the bad, minimized the reality and the messiness and the humanness and totally maximized the good and splashed that all over my channel. I could have done that. If I had become the change your life with a no buy champion and made my channel all about that, it probably would have blown up and I probably could have quit my day job. But I'm, I don't think I could have. I'm not interested in one trick ponies. I'm interested in emotional evolution and human complexity. I feel like instead of being like a self-help book, my channel is like a literary essay. It's like long and meandering and image-based and revolving around story and revolving around character and asking questions about human nature without necessarily answering them. If you are currently on a no-buy, then you'll identify the most with the beginning of the story, the videos that I filmed two years ago. And luckily they're still up on my channel and you can totally go watch them. I even have like a playlist of all of my no-buy year videos and that might, might be the best part of this long literary essay of a channel for you to read right now, to read right now. But I'm currently writing, I'm currently living the third section of the story, which is the part where I try to moderate. I just started this part and I don't expect myself to be successful right away. And I really hope that most of you can understand that and that you can find it in yourselves not to expect me to be successful right away either. I'm not trying to be strict. It's really important to me that I'm not trying to be perfect. What I am, all I've ever claimed to be, is a person who made a dramatic rescue effort two years ago for herself. I, I made a dramatic effort to rescue myself from life ruining overspending. I did that with my no by year and it was a success. With my no by year, I did rescue myself from life ruining overspending, but that didn't make me into a perfect person. And now, two years later, I'm making a slow, painful crawl towards a less stuff-laden lifestyle, a more curated lifestyle. And I'm also making a slow, painful crawl towards natural moderation instead of restriction with my spending on beautiful things. At the same time, I am handling, reviewing, and mostly donating a relatively small but steady stream of products that brands are sending to me for free because they have a YouTube channel. That's what I'm doing. That's my life. I'm willing to be kind and gentle with myself, even though some of you are not. I have to be. And I'm excited to see where it goes. So this month I've learned that it might take a while for some of you to get caught up on the full picture of the year of less stuff and what it means for me and what it actually is. And there were some aspects of the launch of the project, like the way that it looked during the first month, that were alarming to some of you. Right now I'm really wishing that I had done a better job of anticipating that so that it wouldn't have been such a tough time. But all I can say is that there's nothing about the project that's alarming to me. I love how it's going so far. I'm really excited to see it progress, and I hope that you will stick around to see it unfold with me. And that is it. That is the end of this behemoth of a check-in. I hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching to the end, and I really hope that you're remembering to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 